Hello, in this video we're going to talk about finding extreme values on functions. Uh, this is an introduction to uh, local and global maxes and mins and using derivatives to, to identify them. Uh, first, we need some vocabulary. Uh, I'm just going to draw a quick little picture. And uh, do this. So um, I just drew a random graph here. <clears throat> um, I want to talk about two kinds of maxes and mins. Um, there is a what's called a, a a global max or min, and then there's what's uh, called a local max or min. Uh, a global max is also called a relative max sometimes. I'm sorry. A global max is called an absolute max. And a local is called a relative max. They are just different words for the exact same thing. So look at this graph. You can see that here there appears to be a min. There is a max. And there is a min. <coughs> uh, a global or absolute max or min is where you have the highest or lowest point on the entire graph. So this right here that is a global min. This is a this is a sorry, a local max. It's a max in that general region, but it is not the highest point on the graph. That would be here or here or here. It goes up forever, so there is no highest point actually. And this is a local min. Obviously, this is a min in this region, uh, but there are lower points in the graph. What, so it doesn't really matter if it's global or or uh, an absolute max or min. One theme that you'll notice in calculus is everything is one point at a time defined. So if something's a max or a min, you know, in this little region. That's really typically all we care about. Um, maybe some just exceptions in the context of like a, a specific word problem. Where you're finding like the maximum profit anywhere. Um, but most of the time you're, you don't care about whether you have a max or a min. Um, so um, let's talk about the three places you could have a max or a min. I'm going to move this up. So maxes and mins occur um, when the first derivative equals zero. This is called a, a critical point. Uh, that's probably the most common way you're going to identify a max or a min. If you have a, a curve of some sort, when you have a min, the if you have a tangent line, the slope of a flat line like that is zero. The slope of that line is zero, so thus that the derivative is zero. That's a, a sign that you have a max or a min. The second is endpoints. This is the most commonly forgotten type of max or min. Uh, for example, with the square root of x. We'll look at this later, um, but you can see this goes up forever. It doesn't have a max. Um, it does have a min. It's at zero, zero. That's the endpoint. Also, if you have a, a piecewise function, that might have endpoints that are maxes or mins. Uh, and then finally, the third is a non-differentiable point. A great example of that is just a something with a cusp. So like that is a min, obviously, but it's not differentiable. Um, so those are the three types, three reasons you can have a max or a min. Let's look at some examples. Um, and also, I'm going to show you how to use your calculator to, to find a max or a min in some cases. Uh, let's start out with uh, f of x equals 1 over x plus natural log of x 
And this is going to be defined on an interval. 0.5, from 0.5 up to 4. <coughs> so, uh, first off, you need to notice we've got endpoints, definitely got endpoints there. Um, we have the function. I'm going to take the first derivative of this function real quick. Um, so, f prime. Uh, this is like x to the minus 1. So, the power rule sorry, would be negative x to the minus 2. And then this derivative is 1 over x. We need that to equal 0. I'm going to rewrite this. 1 over x minus 1 over x squared uh, equals 0. Uh, I'm just looking at this, and, uh, you know, I, I, it looks like 1 is an answer. If you put in 1, 1 over 1 minus 1 over 1, that does equal 0. I'm going to say we've got a critical point at, uh, at x equals 1. Uh, we certainly have endpoints here also. Um, if, uh, if you want to take a look at this graph, um, let's just do that real quick. I want to take a look at the look at the derivative and just see where that equals zero if anywhere besides one. Uh, I'm going to type in uh, one divided by x minus uh, one divided by x squared. And uh, my my domain here is 0.5 to four, so I'm going to just preemptively make my window. 0.5 to 4, and I'll count by 1s. I really don't care what the y is. We'll just, I guess we can just leave it. And let's just see if this crosses anywhere besides 1. You know, I can't really tell there. So it, it does look like I need to kind of zoom in on my y a little bit more. Uh, so instead of minus 10 to 10, how about like minus, uh, negative 2 to 2? Maybe this will help me kind of see what's going on a little bit better. Um, so it does appear that at 1, we do have that 0. It looks like none, no other spots have a, a 0 there. I'll just maybe zoom in a, a little bit more. You know, Maybe I get a little carried away with this, but I like to just see the graph as well as I can. Definitely, we have a critical point at 1, and, and that's all. Um, so I want to uh, put this aside for a minute. And I want to make a little table of values. Um, so I want to know... Um, if I have a, a, a max or a min. Um, so we're going to have x and f of x. We'll, we'll just talk about this in a minute. I'm going to put my possible values in. I have endpoints, 0.5, uh, and I have a critical point, and I have 4. So I'm going to just kind of, I'll come back to those uh, in a second. Uh, at the end of this example and, and make some comments. But I want to know for now if I have a max or a min. Um, so I'm going to take my first derivative and I'm going to just draw a number line next to this chart. And we're going to start at negative 0.5 and then we'll do 1, we'll do 4. And this is f, this is x. And then up above, I want to write what uh, f prime is. Now I know that f prime at 1 is 0. So I'm going to just going to fill that in. And in this interval, in this interval, I want a plus or a minus. I want a positive or a negative. So um, I'm just going to pick some test values. Um, like in this interval for 1 to 4, 2 might be a good choice. Uh, if I put in 2 here, uh, 1 over 2 is a half minus 1 over 4, 1 half minus 1 over 4, that's a positive interval. Numbers in that interval are going to be positive for the first derivative. Um, and uh, then between 0.5 and 1, uh, we could use like, shoot, I don't know, how about, how about 0.6? Um, I'm just going to plug that in for you right here. You can see what happens if I plug in 0.6. 1 divided by 0.6 uh, minus 1 divided by 0.6 squared. Uh, it's a negative number. Um, so this is now going to help me determine if I have a max or a min. For the number 1, uh, at that critical point, my function, so 
function f of x is, uh, I'm going to say, decreases before 1, and then it increases after 1. So if you decrease before 1, and then you increase after 1, that's a min. So this tells me this function goes down and up. 1 is a min. Whether it's a local or a global min, I don't know, but it's a min. Uh, for the endpoints now, if I start at an endpoint, if, if I start at an endpoint and then the first thing my function does is decrease, then that's a max. That tells me that endpoint is a max. I don't know if it's local or global, but that's fine. And then for four, if my function is increasing, whatever it looks like, and then it stops, basically my function is going up and then it stops and x gets to, gets to four, um, that is a max. So I've got a max, a min, and a max. <clears throat> and uh, we can look at uh, this table now to figure out if they're global or local. I'm going to just go to my original function. We'll come back uh, to what's down below. And I'm going to put in 0.5, I'm going to put in 1, put in 4 to this function and see what we get uh, real quick. 1 divided by 0.5 uh, plus natural log 0.5. That's, uh, I'm going to call that 1.31. And then we'll do uh, 1 divided by 1, obviously, is 1 plus natural log of 1 is 0. So that is just 1. And then if you put in 4, 1 divided by 4 plus natural log of 4 is 1.636. So this is a global max. And this is a, uh, uh, I believe, a global min. We'll look at the picture and confirm that. Because it's the only min, it is a global min, since this is a confined interval. If the graph went up forever or down forever, then it might not be. But if there's if it's a confined interval on the domain from 0.5 to 4, and it's the only min, it's the global min. That's just kind of how it boils down. And this is a local max. And now to kind of finish this off, let's look at the picture of the original function, not the derivative. 1 divided by x. And I'm still on that same uh, domain. I may have to make my y's a little bit bigger. But let's just see what it looks like. Uh, I can't see anything. Uh, remember my y's, my, my y went up to 1, and these are like 1, 1 1.3, 1 1.6. So I probably need to move my window out to 2. So sure enough, there's a max on, on, the, on the left endpoint, a max on the right endpoint. Um, it looks like the right max is higher. If you do trace here uh, and you hit 4, you can see 1.63.5 is the other endpoint, 1.3 as we said. And then at 1, uh, you have a minimum of 1. I could make the calculator find that by going to second calc and going to minimum, but I don't think I need to here. So that's kind of a quick run through of how you use a first derivative and find uh, critical points uh, on a graph. Um, so uh, I want to just talk about one more uh, uh, example here. And uh, let me uh, get you a new piece of paper. Uh, I want to talk about the piecewise function model because that is one that you see occasionally and uh, it can be a little bit uh, confusing. Uh, okay. I'm going to do f of x uh, is do. minus x for x less than 0. We'll do 3 plus 2x minus x squared uh, for x bigger than 0. Um, 
So that is a, a piecewise function. It's just where you have, depending on the domain, uh, the domain is completely covered here from left to right, but if x is less than zero, we have a linear function. If x is bigger than or equal to zero, we have a quadratic function. So that's the only thing that's going on here. Um, I want to just draw a very rough graph of this so you can kind of see what to expect, and then we'll talk about it in more detail. Uh, so we have a y-intercept 2 and a slope of negative 1. So there's my y-intercept of 2. And uh, I should have had an open circle there, an open circle. And the slope looks kind of like this. And then uh, the other portion has a y-intercept at 3. And notice negative x squared means we're going to have something kind of like something kind of like that. And I don't know what this point is yet. That's the vertex. But you can see we're going to have um, this point and this point. And uh, I wish I had more clearly drawn that as an open circle. Uh, this, you're going to find, is not a max or a min at all because it's an open circle. Uh, for this, this portion, 2 minus x, what is the highest it can be? Uh, well, it goes up forever, so it's infinitely high. What is the lowest it can be? This is trickier. Uh, now, it appears that it would almost get down to y is 2. With the open circle, it never quite makes it there. It's like at 2.001 or 2.000001. And um, although this is limited, uh, although it doesn't go to 2 or beyond, it actually does not have a min because of the open circle. Because you can't name what the min is going to be. If you if you yell a number at me I can that, that's slightly above 2, I can always yell one back at you that's a little bit lower, a little bit closer to 2. So this piece right here uh, deceptively actually does not have a max or a min. Um, the function itself, the, the other side of the function, uh, that is an endpoint. That is a, a min. This is a local min at uh, x equals 0, y equals 3. So that's a local min. And this is going to be a local max. The reason it's a local max, not a global max, is that this part of the function does go up forever. So I want to go ahead and find this um, uh, global max. Uh, and um, um, so we're going to take this part of the function. The derivative of this function, by the way, f prime uh, would be uh, negative 1 if x is less than 0, and then 2 minus 2x. Two for x bigger than or equal to 0. So if you try and set this equal to 0, obviously it's not going to be equal to 0. A linear equation does not have a, a, a pop-up max like that. Um, so that can never equal 0. But 2 minus 2x equals 0 at a critical point of x equals 1. So this right here is going to be 1 something, 1 comma something. And to figure that out, all you have to do is plug in 1. 3 plus 2 times 1 is 5. Minus 1 is 4. So 1 comma 4 uh, should be my my uh, uh, my local max there. The, uh, the highest point in that little region is, is 4. Um, so this will wrap up an introduction to uh, finding relative extrema and global extrema on a function.